Hey everyone, I'm Travis. And I'm Nicole. And let's get Wanderlust. In our last video, we talked about how we got to Rome and what we did around Rome in the two days that we were there. In today's video, we're going to talk about Odyssey of the Seas, embarkation, and our first couple days of our Greek Isle cruise. On the morning of our cruise, we got up really early and walked over to the Trevi Fountain. As I said on our last video, having breakfast at the Trevi Fountain should be on everyone's bucket list. And again, we had breakfast at the La Antico de Forna and had some pastries and some espresso. And since we were there super early in the morning, we were able to walk right up to the water of the Trevi Fountain and just hang out with the very limited crowd and very limited people around us. After breakfast, we headed back to the hotel where we had arranged a car service through the hive to take us to the port of Rome for embarkation. They had a car waiting for us at 10 a.m. and that car service cost 160 euros and took us about an hour to get to the port. The port of Rome is actually not in the city of Rome. It's about an hour away in a city called Civita Vecchia. Uh, this port is a major port for cruise and shipping traffic. The terminal that Royal Caribbean uses is on the back side of the port. Um, it's a little bit harder to get to, you have to go through a couple security gates, but our black car dropped us off right at the front of it. When we got out of the car, a porter was waiting for us that we tipped about 5 euros and they took our bags into the terminal. The outside of the terminal was very chaotic, with a lot of cars dropping off and a lot of buses dropping off. Um, but we walked right through uh, the baggage drop-off area and went into the suite line since we were staying in a suite. Security did not take very long and after we had our passport scanned and our pictures taken, we walked pretty much right onto the cruise ship. I will say the Civit Avecchia port was actually one of the easiest ports to get on the cruise ship from. Every, everything inside the terminal was very organized. It might have just been because we were suite guests and we had an a expedited line to get onto the ship, um, but overall it was a very nice experience. So Odyssey of the Seas is a Quantum class ship, similar to another ship that we've been on for an Alaskan cruise, Ovation of the Seas. It is the newest ship in the Quantum series. It came out in 2021. Uh, it does have a lot of similarities to Wonder in terms of the stylistic and color scheme options that they chose, so it is a very updated and modern, sleek design. They chose a lot of light, bright colors to make the ship feel nice and airy inside, and overall it's just a very pretty, brand new ship. We've mentioned it a few times in, in a few of our videos, um, but this was the first time that we've ever booked a suite, and we had an aft-facing junior suite, obviously at the back of the ship. So our room was very large. It was probably double the size, or at least it felt double the size of a normal uh, stateroom cabin. Um, it had a very large balcony with uh, two chairs on the back of it. The shower and the toilet were separated in the two different rooms, which made it kind of handy for getting ready. Uh, so you didn't have to wait for somebody to, to leave the restroom um, in order to uh, you know brush your teeth or do any of that sort of stuff. Overall, the room was very comfortable, had a lot of room, a lot of storage, and our stateroom attendant, uh, Marjorie, was excellent. I will say this room was probably our favorite stateroom that we've had on any cruise ship, and probably our favorite hotel room that we've had in any of our travels. As soon as we got on the ship, we started booking reservations for dining, shows, and entertainment. So one of the options on Odyssey of the Seas is the North Star. It is a moving observation deck that goes up several stories above the ship and then also goes out the side of the ship over the ocean. When we went on Ovation of the Seas, the North Star was not functional, so unfortunately we had never been on it before, but we did get the chance to do, they offer free experiences that you can reserve in the app, and we were able to book a time slot right when we were getting ready to leave Rome. We had hoped for clear skies so that we would have a great view of Rome. Unfortunately, it was a little cloudy, so the view was not as great as it probably would have been. Overall, it is a really great experience, especially the free option. You can book a paid option. I believe it's about $20 a person. And the difference between the two is that the free time slot just takes you up several stories above the ship 
you do not get to go over the ocean, which you do with the paid option. But it's a really great option, especially if you're in a very scenic port or area. Um, we had been excited to try it in Alaska because obviously that's a very scenic destination, um, but unfortunately we didn't get the chance. All right, I'm gonna to talk to you about one of my favorite things about Odyssey of the Seas, and that is the Coastal Kitchen. If you've never heard of Coastal Kitchen, it is like the main dining room for suite guests. It is a special restaurant. If you stay in a junior suite, you can go there for dinner. And if you stay in any type of suite that's higher than a junior suite, you can go there for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So the very first night of our cruise, we, we walked to Coastal Kitchen and made reservations with the other couple that we were on this cruise with. We were expecting it to um, sell out quickly and we wouldn't be able to get a time. Um, on our very first dinner there, it was filet mignon night, which is one of our favorite dishes. And we were one of the only people in Coastal Kitchen, which was very surprising. Um, our expectations of the food were completely blown away by this restaurant to the point where we just made reservations for Coastal Kitchen for every night of the cruise for dinner. Um, the food was excellent. Our server, uh, Kashin, was amazing. Overall, our expectations were completely blown away and when it's one of our favorite specialty restaurants on any Royal Caribbean cruise. Over the first several days of our cruise, the food was excellent. It didn't matter what we ordered, we all really pretty much enjoyed what we had. And the service from our waiter was unbelievable. He made recommendations, he told us about each one of the ports we were going to and gave us ideas of things to do. Overall, Coastal Kitchen was amazing. Since we had a junior suite, we were kind of disappointed with the sweet perks that we were being offered. And Coastal Kitchen kind of made it all worth it. Uh, it, made, it was one of the best benefits of booking a suite on a Royal Caribbean cruise. And I actually was texting a few of our friends and told them if you're gonna book a, a, a suite, make sure they go to Coastal Kitchen. One of the venues that we spent the most time in during this cruise is the 270 Lounge. It is a large open seating space at the back of the ship that during the day has full expansive windows going all around the back and at night they actually turn those windows into a projection screen that they use for their shows and experiences. One of the great perks about 270 Lounge is it's right next to 270 Cafe so you can get a snack or a coffee for me. And there's also a bar in 270. So if you're looking for any beverages, mocktails, wine, beer, any of that kind of stuff, you can get it all right there. One of 270's other biggest features are the robotic screens that are on robotic arms that they can move around to enhance any of the shows or experiences that they're offering. The biggest show that they offer is the book on this ship. And overall, it was a good show. I will say it had some good music, but I'm always a little disappointed in how they utilize the robotic screens during these shows because we also saw another show, the 270 Experience, which we also saw something very similar on Ovation where they actually do demos with the robotic arms to show what they're capable of. And that is usually awesome. They can do some great things and it's super entertaining and then you watch the main show and wonder why they don't also do that there but overall it was a good show um the 270 experience was was great we got to see a new demo that they just released and then they also did a lot of their trivia and game shows in 270 um so we saw love and marriage which is always a great time um, and family feud which was fun as well I will say I fell asleep during the book. The other big venue aboard Odyssey of the Seas is the Royal Theater. This is where you'll find most of your bigger stage shows. And on Odyssey of the Seas, the two biggest stage shows that they have is one is the Showgirl Show, which is almost exactly the same as Navigator of the Seas Showgirl Show. And they have the headliners that they run through there. On our first night of the cruise, the headliner act was the Gold Art Duo, and they were on America's Got Talent and Ukraine's Got Talent. Um, they are a Ukrainian art acrobatic duo. 
that does some jokes and some aerial stuff and some feats of strength. Um, overall, the show was pretty good. So if you're on a cruise and you see the gold art duo listed as one of the headliner acts, I was just going to go see them. The Showgirls show uh, was almost identical to the one that we saw in Navigator. It is a good overall show and worth checking out if you haven't seen it. It basically goes through the history of Showgirls from the 1920s all the way up until the future um, with song and dance. Overall, decent show. Our friend Shelly hated it, but we kind of liked it. Our second day was a day at sea and we were going to be passing through the Strait of Messina and going past Stromboli and Etna volcanoes. So we made sure to get up early that morning. We ordered room service, which is free if you do the continental option. Um, you have a choice of cereal, muffins, donuts, danishes, um, oatmeal, things like that, that you can get delivered to your room each morning. So that morning we did breakfast on the balcony and watched as we went past Stromboli Volcano. We did not get to see Etna because it was very cloudy and foggy that morning. And then as we went through the Strait of Messina. The uh, Strait of Messina is actually really cool because land is really close on each side of you. On one side you have Sicily, the island, island of Sicily. On the other side you have Italy. You actually need a uh, pilot boat to go through the Strait of Messina actually a really cool experience uh, if you're going through there i would suggest being awake for it there's a lot of cool stuff to look at also on our day at sea we ate uh, lunch at the el loco fresh and if you've watched a few of our videos you know that we actually really like el loco fresh i will say on odyssey it wasn't as good as it was on wonder or navigator but overall a really good quick service restaurant that's right there on the pool deck the rest of that day after lunch, we did go to see Love and Marriage at 1 p.m. And then since it was a sea day, we just kind of chilled. Um, we were still super, whether it be jet lagged or just tired um, from the trip. So after Love and Marriage, we actually went back to our room and took a nap until dinner. So the third day of our cruise was the day that we get to go to Santorini, Greece, which was one of the ports that we were really looking forward to. Uh, Santorini is actually a tender port, which means you do not dock at a dock. You actually drop anchor in the middle of the harbor area and you take a smaller boat uh, to shore. If you haven't been on a Royal Caribbean cruise for a tender uh, process, so if you run an Oasis class, they never do tendering. But on Quantum and smaller uh, size ships, they do in certain ports. So you have to get up kind of early and go down to the Music Hall on Odyssey of the Seas and they hand out tender tickets for your group. So we had four people in our group, so we got four tickets and it has a number on it. Um, that number is uh, when you get to leave the ship. So they call it on the uh, intercom to let you know uh, what number is up for tender. Um, and then you get to leave the ship at that time. Uh, please pay attention to the number on your tender ticket. Don't be the person that tries to go down the stairs to the tender area when your ticket number is 27 and they've only called number four. It happens, it's funny, um, but you will not be allowed down there. Royal Caribbean's pretty strict about their tender ticket times. I will say that if you need to get off the ship in a timely fashion, like we did, we had an excursion that was pretty close to the time that we were able to get off the ship. Make sure that you get there early. There will be a lot of people in line for tender tickets. And if you're not one of the first ones in line, depending on what your number comes out to be, it could be an hour or two before you're able to get off. After we got up really early and got our tender tickets, we decided to have breakfast in the main dining room. This was the only time that we actually ate in the main dining room on this cruise because we were enjoying Coastal Kitchen way too much. Um, for breakfast, I had the Eggs Benedict. And I had the French toast. The food in the main dining room was pretty decent. It was very typical of main dining rooms on other Royal Caribbean ships. It was a lot better and the service was a lot better than Navigator, which you've watched our previous videos, you know that we didn't have a really good experience in the main dining room on Navigator. The main dining room on Odyssey of the Seas is very pretty. There's a lot of art. Um, it's mostly a floral scene 
and the main dining room actually has a gigantic hole in the center of it above you that is on the via section of the esplanade you can actually look down on people eating um, kind of a cool setup overall decent experience for breakfast at the main dining room so around 1 p.m or 1 30 p.m our tender tickets were called and we went down to the gangway area to get on the little boat to take us to shore. Um, Santorini was a port that we were really looking forward to. Um, it is a very pretty port, um, but when you get to the dock or the harbor that you're actually uh, taking the tender to, you're at the bottom of a gigantic hill and you need to get up to the city of Fira. Um, there's two ways to get up there. One is the cable car and the other is the mule trail. Since we had an excursion and we were in kind of a hurry, we did opt for the cable car on the way up. It is six euros per person and there will be a line, so just expect it. Um, it didn't take that long though, we maybe waited in line 15 to 20 minutes before we were able to board a cable car. Once you board your cable car, it takes about five to 10 minutes to get up to the top of the mountain and then you are immediately in the city of Fira. Once we got in Safira, we walked through some of the shops that were close to the entrance and then we were hungry so we went looking for some food. When you go down a little bit and then towards the right there is a small cafe kind of tucked in a corner called Absolutely Fabulous or um, some of the signs say Ab Fab. So we had lunch there. Travis had a ham, turkey, and cheese sandwich and then I had a Greek sandwich, which included tomatoes, olives, and feta. Super simple, super delicious. I would highly recommend. Uh, Travis even ate half of my sandwich because he said it was so good. Um, Nicole's sandwich was one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. It also had um, hard boiled egg on it. It was really, really good. Um, I will say absolutely fabulous was a great restaurant. Um, the service and how quickly you get your food is a little slow. So we were kind of pressed for time and we had to inhale our food, but it was really, really good. Um, after that, we had to go meet our excursion um, near the cable car area um, uh, so we can, you know, explore the island of Santorini. We booked our excursion on Santorini uh, through the Shipmates app and the company that they use is the Shore Excursions Group. Our excursion was called the Small Group Santorini Highlights. It was about $100 per person, so for the four of us, it was about $400. This excursion uh, starts you off in the city of Fira. It goes down the mountain a little bit and gives you an overlook of the entire harbor area. You can see basically the entire caldera of the island of Santorini. Some really good shots there and some good selfies. Um, and then you go down to the city of Ia, or as an English speaker would say, Oya, um, which is the city that has the white uh, churches with the blue roofs. Um, the city of Oya or Ia has a lot of tourists in it. Um, we walked down one of the main walkways or aisleways, and it was wall to wall people um and it was very hot outside at that time but we were able to get some decent uh photography decent shots of the cruise ship and the churches and that sort of stuff and do a little bit of shopping before we had to go to our next stop um which was a winery and a what was called the family bakery um we don't really drink a whole lot of alcohol but the bakery was really appealing to us um the couple that we were with ordered some baklava and no exaggeration, the best baklava that we've ever had in our entire lives. Uh, we actually went back and ordered a second round of it and we carried it with us through our entire excursion. Um, very good food. Um, the winery was decent, um, but overall really good stop on that excursion. Um, from there, we walked through a village. It was called Big Village in in greek which uh i'm not going to pronounce it but it, it basically translated into english to big village um we walked down an alleyway little houses on both sides of you cat uh the greek cats you know walking through the aisles some 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 greek dogs um really good scenery 
Um, there was actually a, an abandoned house on this little alleyway. Um, we asked our tour guide how much that house would be, and he said it was about 70,000 euros, but it would take about 70,000 euros to rehab the house to be able to live in it. And it sounded really, really appealing to move there. The village and that little walkway was probably the best part of the excursion. Um, we got to see some really cool sites and some nice architecture and basically what you would see in the photos of Santorini was down that, uh, that, that walkway. After that, we took the bus over to a black sand beach. Uh, since Santorini is a volcanic island, it is an old caldera of a volcano. Um, the, the beaches are mostly black sand, which is like fine volcanic rock. Um, the beach was the Carterados beach. It had a bar on it, which Nicole had a really nice drink from there. And then we kind of just sat and relaxed next to the water and watched the sunset. Um, overall, a really good experience on that beach. Very peaceful. It was just our tour group there, which was about 15 people. Um, very quiet, enjoyable. Um, after the Black Sand Beach, uh, they took us back to the city of Fira and we had to get back down to the ship because it was getting late. We had two choices to get back down to the ship. We had the cable car, which was $6 or six euros per person, or the dreaded mule trail. It was getting close to all aboard time. I believe we had about maybe 45 minutes to an hour left before everyone had to be back on the ship. And the cable car line wrapped around the shops in the village of Fira. So we weren't sure how long that line was going to be and we didn't want to risk not being on the ship when it left, so we took the mule trail. In terms of how long the trail is, um, it, it wasn't that bad. It is very steep and slippery, so that would be one thing that I would say to watch out for. Um, the other would be all the mules that are going up and down the trail because that is we didn't mention it earlier, but that is actually kind of a third option. So you have the cable car, the mule trail that you can either walk or pay to ride a mule. So you don't have to walk and you still go up the same steps. So you are sharing the walkway with the mules and Travis is afraid of horses for some weird reason. So he did not enjoy it, but it also was kind of hectic with all the mules um, and not the greatest experience but it was faster much faster yeah we got down to the the port to get onto the tender back to the ship pretty quickly um, i was running from the mules as they kept forcing us to the edges of the mule trail and i was completely uncomfortable with that experience um, we took the tender back to the ship uh, there was a line to get back onto the tender boats um, it didn't take that long. Um, I had enough time to eat the rest of the baklava that we were carrying around with us. And then obviously it's a couple minute uh, trip back to the ship. So Santorini was a port that we were really, really looking forward to. Um, and I liked it. It was one of the, our more favorite ports that, at least my, one of my more favorite ports that I have been to. Um, what about you? I really enjoyed it. It made me want to go back to Greece because we didn't get as much time in Oya as I would have preferred. So it just means that maybe we'll have to take a separate trip without the restrictions of Greece. Yeah, the um, the Airbnbs or condos that are on the side of the hill in, in Oya or Ia um, were really appealing, especially with how hot it was. They have like little uh, swimming pools attached to them and I just wanted to escape the excursion and run down and jump in one of those swimming pools. Um, but the sights, the food, um, overall Santorini is definitely up there with Sitka, Alaska is one of our favorite ports that we have been to. And if you're gonna go on a cruise uh, to the Greek Isles, make sure Santorini is on your itinerary. So uh, we're gonna wrap up the video here. That's the first three days of our Greek Isle cruise aboard Odyssey of the Seas. Um, on our next video, we're going to talk about Mykonos, we're going to talk about Ephesus, and we're going to talk about Pompeii, uh, three also really good ports uh, from this cruise. I'll re-emphasize this was one of the best cruises that we've ever been on, and we really recommend Greek Isle Cruises, and we really recommend Odyssey of the Seas. Um, if you have any questions or want to mention something that we may have missed in our conversation here, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe.